All right, guys. Um, subject picked up on the Discord group. Um, to be fair, since I've had the flu lately and been busy with the house and changing jobs, the channels um, have sort of been a bit stagnant. Um, like I said, I'm looking at how to review and improve this one. Um, I've got to look at the Spanish one because uh, the other problem with the Spanish stuff is um, while I'm working, I'm not actually progressing much in Spain and my builders ain't developing much either. Um, to the point we've actually gone to get some other builders now because we waited too long. I mean, it's been nearly a year to get the conservatory finished. Money sat there. <laughs> I literally just need the builder. Um, so <coughs> I'm just sort of looking at uh, some of the topics that we ain't covered before. Um, like I said, I'm going to do some more on personal development um, on a broader sense to cover more age groups as well. Um, yeah, so living in Spain or living in the Philippines or the UK. Um, um, I was just reading the comment from D Mars um, that sort of weighing these options up at the moment. I've got to admit, if I hadn't been to Spain, um, I'd have probably stayed in the Philippines um, if it wasn't for the kids. You know, at the end of the day, the whole move was about their education. Um, originally I moved, <coughs> was moving to the UK with the family and then I just didn't like it. <laughs> I've got it, me hasn't got any better. Um, I mean, especially with the government's been bad lately. So for me, um, would I move back to the Philippines? Um, compared to the UK? Yes, 100%. Um, but with Spain as the other option, it's got to be Spain. The reason... <laughs> Um, Spain is more beneficial um, for me um, is for the kids you know the, the Philippines is very limited for what's on offer for the kids um, but if it was just me and the missus to be fair we'd probably travel more <laughs> instead than wouldn't be either it would just be like we'd have a base in one <coughs> and then spend a lot more time traveling um, because one of the things around the whole property purchase and everything else is to create roots for the long term for the family um, so that the kids have always got a base to come back to. Um, you know, when I reach, reach my timely demise at some point, um, it's it's just giving them some, some base and some grounding. Um, but what would I think about living in the Philippines full time today? Um, the COVID environment is, has been worse there than sort of gets coverage. Um, I know some of the hospitals now weren't too keen on you being ill and turning up in case you had COVID, which is great for a hospital, not wanting patients. Um, I know they were quite lock, locked down for a long period of time. I know Jay had problems going back to the Philippines. I know other people that were either stuck there or um, couldn't get back. Um, <coughs> so from those sort of things you, you've got to sort of factor those in but I wouldn't say that make that your defining thing being stuck in a country um, because my personal view is with life is too short to worry about what if now what would put me off living back where we normally are um, is pollution's worse population growth is still out of control um developments there is excessive you know a lot of property developments but they don't put the infrastructure in properly um the corruption is rife but then i'm sitting here dealing with um liz trust boris johnson what i know that's in the uk and i was saying can't even use that as um a sort of justification these days because quite simply they're all doing it um <coughs> But what what I would say about living in the Philippines, I found it more laid back. You can cut yourself off a little bit in the sense of um, because we had like nannies for the kids, in laws would do shopping, gardener, all the laundry woman. You could literally never leave the house if you wanted to. Um, so you could make yourself very insular if you wanted to, like some some extreme millionaire. Uh, not that you have to be a millionaire. That was the point. But you could live there quite happily 
without having to get involved in a lot of the nonsense that goes on today or the, the constant trying to get you involved in it that's what frustrates me i switch youtube on it's always like let's trust brexit ukraine war da 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 why is all the positive stuff <laughs> um but but from a lifestyle point of view um i found philippines food wise there's plenty to choose from there people can complain it's expensive but to be fair good food costs money anyway um i've just had a sunday roast which i paid double what i would go into say a toby's ta tavern or what, toby's carberry or whatever it is um but um it's better quality meat but but the point being is you do get what you pay for in the philippines i think you do get uh, money for value in the sense of you don't pay for the stuff you don't have um, the reason I say that is for example the UK we get extortionate um, false tax nations to support the NHS for example I'm gonna get some flack on that one um, but the point being is we have no choice in the matter and it's a excessive burden I have private health care I should be able to opt out of paying the NHS since I have private health care but you can't you've got to pay for both um, in the Philippines you find if you don't pay for something you often don't get it but it's also not sort of taken from you you know like the BBC and the TV license um, you don't have a lot of that stuff going on if you don't you know if it's not there it's not there which means your cost of living's cheaper because you're not getting dragged into all this bureaucracy don't get me wrong you do get your uh, your residency fees and <coughs> all the bits and pieces that are um, small burdens but when you compare them to the UK and other countries um, the Philippines isn't that expensive I mean I'll, I'll be honest with you Spain is not that not too bad we've just renewed all the um, cause I've got a 10 year residency card the wife and kids have got five year residency cards um, but but the point being is it's bureaucratic but easier to deal with um, I'll give you a good example I mean, this is where the Philippines and Spain are probably not far off. To process the paperwork, um, you needed certain documents from the, from the Philippines. Nobody was at work during the pandemic, so you couldn't get the documents. Now, if it was the UK, I'm sure they would be going through the rigmarole or trying to deport because the paperwork wasn't, wasn't filed, even though you couldn't get the paperwork. Where in Spain, you can send a letter sort of saying, look, I got it as quick as I could. I know it's three months late. Blah, blah, blah. And they go, well, it's wrong, it's wrong, but we'll submit it anyway. It's, <laughs> they're more workable, you know. Um, yeah, and it, it seems to go through the, you know, the Philippines, Spain. I say even, you know, when you get some, even roadside checks with the police. I mean, in Spain, they're quite. Um, the guard are quite abrupt and quite um, unaccommodating, shall I say. <coughs> but they just go through the rigmarole. With the UK, you go, oh, well, I stopped you, mate, for speeding, mate, mate. Oh, by the way, I'm going to take you to court. It's a different mentality. It's a false friend thing. As if, like, they feel they're in the wrong. Where in Spain, they know you're in the wrong. <laughs> So they don't let you away with it but at the same time um i prefer that you know it's the same in the philippines you know when i got a road check when the, my license was wrong um because the actual traffic office had given me the wrong license um april talked us out of it you won't get that in the uk they'd be taking my vehicle off us um <clears throat> so would I prefer the Philippines and Spain? The answer is yes. If I didn't have kids and family, would I go to the Philippines? I would say it's, it's probably just as likely as Spain. Um, in all honesty, um, with work being something I don't like these days, let's, let's put it in proper context here, um, I could sell up everything in Spain and go and live in the Philippines. Um, if we sort of ditch the house and everything else, um, <coughs> we could actually get to a point of 
retirement. <laughs> that's that's the reality of it. Um, but the fact is, we've got kids, so we don't have that luxury in the sense of just saying, Look, let's sell a house, the land's going up, we've got a good deal in the first place, fully renovated, we can maximise the price, let's sell it and cash out. Because um, to be fair, that would be enough money for the next probably 15 years. Um, and that's if we did nothing else. And that's not as if we took the 15 years worth of money and invested it and then just lived off the interest. Um, so the point being is the opportunity would be there if we didn't have kids. Um, but then I look at where we live in Spain. We have a very good lifestyle. We live next to the, the beach. The whole point of Spain was it gives us access to Portugal and the rest of Europe. Um, it's on our doorstep. We can drive right away across Europe so there's two different perspectives there um, as you probably guess UK is not my retirement destination or my full-time permanent destination it is as me and the wife call it the factory it's literally clock in make money and leave that's that's all it is for us it's nothing else <coughs> sad that it's like that but over the years, I found the UK has declined, and the state of the governments these days is embarrassing. Um, I find people are a lot on; they're more unhappy now. I don't know why. I don't know why. I mean, I know my industry is just generally everyone's unhappy <laughs> because it's it's just a horrible industry. Um, and I'm in the PFI industry, by the way, public funded initiatives in the, or pub, private funded initiatives. And then you have the, there's other variants of that. Um, so basically you're providing services to local authorities and NHS and their, their expectations is pretty much always a difficult one. Um, they often go, it's underfunded, but I often think it's, it's how things are funded and where money goes, which is often the problem. Um, but the whole point is, these contracts are halfway through. Halfway through is like this, money in, money in, money in, money in, money in, money in. And during this bit, these banks and companies have been taking money out. But the, this money was actually built around the maintenance, the replacements, the, you know, so for example, it's the painting, it's the carpets, it's the new air conditioning, lift refurbs, um, new windows, new doors, uh, new escalators, uh, new lighting, um, new pipe work. That's that money. But what they do is they do that. They try to do as little as possible for as long as possible. The problem is we're now here. This is year 15, which is about halfway on most of these contracts. But because you haven't been doing you haven't been doing that spend and you've been doing this one, this bit has been taken by these companies. Um, and the problem is, halfway the wheels start falling off. Um, because if you look look at the life expectancy of air conditioning, even basics like toilet refurbishments. Um, if they haven't been getting maintained and they haven't been getting refurbed, once you get to this point, a lot of stuff needs fixing, a lot of stuff needs replacing, a lot of stuff doesn't have any money anymore because companies have been profiteering. <coughs> and that's my day-to-day -day grind. <clears throat> so you can understand that is all I get for years. Because <laughs> everybody wants everything. Um, but that's just part and parcel of the beast. Um, I've gone off on a tangent here. But the, the point is, that's the industry I work in. Um, and hence, it's not a positive environment. Um, like I said, a lot of it is, you know, like I said, they talk about underfunding and everything else. But <coughs> a lot of that is about how these contracts run um, and how they're driven for the banks, etc. Um not a good place to be but for me pays the bills but that's part of where you've got to learn to let things go over your head 
and just not get bogged down in things like being ethical and um, caring about what you do. <laughs> Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way, but I just mean it's for some people. I think it, it gets too much for them. Um, but for me, the Philippines, there's sitting up on my porch, watching the rain fall, hearing it hitting the metal roofs. Those those are the things I like. Seeing the lightning hitting across the uh, the sea. That's that's. They are the place I like to be, and like I said, one of the big problems is the population density is increasing. Everything's becoming congested. Traffic's taking longer. It used to take about 30, 45 minutes from the airport. I think it's about two and a half hours now. The road hasn't got any longer. <laughs> <coughs> the traffic's just got worse. Um, but I can. Uh, I could see myself living there. It's just that when I sit there and look at that in the dust, going out on your motorbike and having a hose down when you get back to get all the dust off you from the, the road dust and the diesel dust and all that sort of stuff, compared to Spain where we're on the coast, we're sat next to salt lakes, we've got some of the best air quality. We've got an average age of 68. We've got the highest density of people over 100 living in the area, low crime, good weather, good food, good medical cover, good education system, access to Europe, um, and then when you do a comparison on cost of living, there ain't much between the Philippines and um, Spain anymore. See, the thing is, if I went back to the Philippines, sold the house in Spain, we've got property in the Philippines, you see. Um, and vice versa, we sold up our lot in the Philippines. We could probably buy a couple of places in Spain instead. Um, but yeah, I can't see me living in the Philippines full time um, unless something changed. You know, the, the advantage I've got with the Philippines, if, if, if say everything went to complete disaster. <coughs> I could get a backpack and go to the Philippines and I could survive quite easily. Spain it's a bit harder. Um, Philippines I think you can get your costs far, you know, be right down the bottom if you had to and work your way back up. Spain I think you'd find that difficult because you, your rents are much higher. Um, but the, like I said, we've got properties in both countries so it's not so bad for us. Um, but that's the other thing. I've took my mortgage from about 550 down to 380 um, every month I'm overpaying it by over a thousand a month um, because A you've just seen the interest rates in the UK going up I don't think that will ripple into Europe um, but at the same time the mortgage is what keeps me locked to the UK once that's gone I can open the the box to everywhere else um, so yeah I'd say Spain Spain's our home um, it's our base for Europe Philippines is our base for, for um, Asia 